Oh, I messed up my boost. Ah. <laughs> Hope you're hungry, Steve, because you're about to eat my dust. Oh my, how totally original, Thomas. You know, say what you will about the pandemic, but at least we still got video games. <laughs> yeah, not only are they really fun, but with online play, we can connect with a ton of players around the world. That is true, and it's a real shame that so many people look down on gaming and think of it as, like, too violent for children or a waste of time. If people actually took a minute or two to discuss and analyze video games, I guarantee that they can learn a lot... <laughs> Thomas? You thinking what I'm thinking? That we should do an autism video about video games that can benefit autistics and help them grow? Yeah, dude! Get out of my head! No, seriously, get out of my head! I'm Steven from Toastamac, along with my brother Thomas, and for today's autism video, we want to share with you the amazing things you can learn from video games and how they can benefit those with autism. A couple of quick notes before we begin. We are going to talk about what video games can teach you. That doesn't mean, however, that game designers are obligated to do so, as really they can do whatever they want with their medium. Also, for parents of autistic children, parental discretion is advised as the rating system for video games needs to be taken seriously. We wouldn't want a 10-year-old playing something like Doom now, would we? Ooh, nice save there, Thomas. With that said, let's get right to the meat of the video and discuss the various things that autistics can learn from video games, starting with social skills. Hold on. I hear something. Something from beyond the fourth wall. From you, the audience. You're saying, but Steven, what can a video game, which is a purely digital experience, teach autistics about social skills? Well, the answer may surprise you. Most of you have probably heard a million times about how video games can improve hand-eye coordination, and I can assure you, this is not a myth. To clarify, we are talking about motor skills, or the movement and actions of our own body. In order to achieve a desired outcome, we sometimes need our body to perform certain actions, be they as simple as grasping or pulling an object, or as complex and arduous as working at a keyboard for hours on end. And in terms of practicing this skill via video games, Nintendo has always been king. At least, in my opinion. The Nintendo Wii in particular is perfect for learning motor skills, as there are multiple Wii games like Wii Sports Resort and Super Mario Galaxy that require the player to perform certain movements to execute a much needed action. It may be an old console, but if you can find it online, most likely Amazon, I would highly recommend getting one to help teach autistic children about using motor skills. Going even further, another element that video games can help autistics in is making mistakes. Um, Steven, I thought the idea was that we don't want mistakes. Am I missing something? You're getting ahead of me. What I mean is they can help autistics learn how to deal with the stress that comes with making mistakes. The very thought of messing up by itself can immediately fill us with fear, dread, and anxiety, which can feel amplified when we actually do. Here's the thing, though. In video games, mistakes are not only made to happen, but they're expected to happen. The idea is that the more you make mistakes, the more you get used to it, and the less anxiety you experience as the consequences of a mistake in most simple games is commonly just being placed back at the start of a level. After committing enough mistakes, you can make adapting and changing plans much easier. So you can just calmly say, okay, this didn't work. How can I learn from this mistake and do better next time? For this subject, a great example is the Super Mario Brothers games. Which one? There's the original, the second, the third, the Nintendo DS, the Wii, the Wii U, what? Yes? Whichever one you play, the Super Mario Brothers games have always been simple and straightforward. Get from point A to point B. 
When you make a mistake in this game, and yes, you are bound to make a mistake or two in this, you'll find that you're not really punished that badly. If anything, you just get sent back to the last checkpoint or worst case scenario, just restart the level. Nothing more than minor setbacks. The idea is, as Thomas mentioned, as you make these mistakes, you learn how to avoid them and progress further in the game, as well as feeling more comfortable and less stressful with making future mistakes later on down the road. So in a sense, the Super Mario Bros. games can not only help you with dealing with the stress of mistakes, but help you better adapt to the ongoing situation. Speaking of adaptability, video games can help teach autistics about being more flexible with what they do, which if you recall about autism can be one of their greatest areas for improvement. We usually like sticking to a set routine, schedule, or a set method, so when things begin to alter around us, we don't always have an easy time changing gears. However, most video games love to throw the players curveballs and make them rethink how they approach certain scenarios. What may work for one enemy or one level entirely might not work for the next one, and thus you have to make the appropriate adjustments in order to progress further into the game. For this, we can look into the Pokemon series as an illustration of adaptability. Again, which one? There oh, no you don't. There wouldn't be enough hours in the day. <sighs> Just like the Mario Brothers games, the formula for Pokemon has been pretty consistent. Capture and train different kinds of Pokemon, challenge and defeat the bosses known as gym leaders, work your way to the Pokemon League and become the champion. The big difference between the Mario games and Pokemon, aside from the cute mascot, is the kind of obstacles you'll face which will affect your adaptability skills. Throughout the journey, you will face gym leaders who you have to defeat before you can continue onward. Each of the gym leaders have their own set of Pokemon with a specific type attribute, making them more effective against certain types, but weaker against other ones. With that in mind, you most likely won't be able to get through all the gym battles with just one set of Pokemon, meaning you will have to think carefully about which Pokemon you bring into battle with each different gym leader. In other words, as you progress through the journey, you are gradually learning to adapt to what is happening and be more flexible with your strategies. Finally, an area where video games can really help autistics is peer-to-peer -peer interactions or socializing. With online play available to all the latest consoles, we can connect to people from all around the world and make some really great friends. Plus, when chatting online with someone, you can remove some key stress factors, such as interacting face to face. Talking to someone by itself can be hard already. Then you try to add reading body language and facial expression, along with making eye contact with them to show that we are listening, and you got quite a tall order for some people. When you interact with someone online, though, you remove these stress factors and can focus on fine-tuning some other elements, like watching your tone, making sure not to interrupt the other person, and paying attention to what they are saying. Once those elements are practiced enough, then, in theory, when you actually do face-to-face -face conversations, it should be much easier to handle and less anxiety-building. Of course, you want to be careful with who you interact with, and you have the right to choose who you want to involve yourself with, as well as who you don't. If the other person is toxic or disrespectful in any way, shape, or form, don't bother with them. Just block them and move along. Trust me. The drama and stress of continuing that line of interaction is not worth it. As Thomas and I have demonstrated, there is so much you can learn from video games, as well as how they can benefit those with autism. And we just hit the tip of the iceberg. Sadly, we are out of time and have to stop right here. Wait, what? What do you mean we have to stop the video? Oh. Oh, right. I suppose it is time to wrap this up. But I'll tell you what, since there's so much more to learn from video games, 
If we can get enough likes and comments on this video, let's say about 10 comments about what you've learned from video games and how they've benefited you, and if you want to learn more about this topic, then Thomas and I will be more than happy to do a part two of this topic. Trust me, there's a lot to learn from here. And on that note, it's time to end the video. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Toastamac to stay up to date in our latest videos. Also, we just published our own website for the first time, www.toastamac.com. If you could check it out and see what we have there, that would mean the world to us. And until the next video, see you later. Bye-bye!